Welcome back to Tip to Tally Films, and today we're going to talk about Christian Gonzalez, number zero from the University of Oregon. Um, Stats-wise, well, measurables-wise, he's 6'2", 201 pounds, which is, is great for a corner. Uh, played at the University of Oregon, only gave up three TDs this year, uh, had four interceptions, and as far as the 64 targets, the 64 times that he was targeted, he gave up 35 catches on the year. Um, take a look at four games. Look at Stanford, UCLA, uh, BYU, and UGA. And I'm uh, just going to kind of throw some PFF grades out there that you can kind of see based off what I give them versus what PFF gave them. Versus Georgia, he was a 52.5, UCLA 71.2, BYU 75, and Stanford 64.3. And all of the PFF grades are out of 100. Well, let's get into the film and see what I grade him. And even though he'll be the number one corner right now because that's what most pundits have him it may not be the number one corner at the end of the year from my standpoint but let's see what christian gonzalez has to offer roll the intro All right, let's get started with Christian Gonzalez film. First of all, I want to say a lot of people outside of UGA did not test him. He was by far the most physical of the two when you're looking at him versus any receiver. Uh, with him being 6'2", 200 pounds, that made a difference. He bullied a lot of people. Um, but against UGA, that kind of changed a little bit. But before we just dive into the film, do me a favor, hit the like button. Also, hit that subscribe. And if you want to be notified when we drop the rest of these draft videos, hit that bell so you can be notified also. Again, when, when the video is over, if you disagree, agree, like, dislike, or have anything to say about Gonzalez, put it in the comment section and we can roll from there. So looking at my man coverage first, starting off, he's at the bottom of your screen. And footwork is pretty darn good. In phase, ball is out. You know, he knocks it away. Simple. You'll see a better picture of it from this uh, end view. This end zone view, rather. Great position. Great position. I just play the ball. Sticks that right arm out there, knocks it away. Great position versus number four. And Stanford does have a good receiver that went to the senior bowl. I'm not sure if he's number four, though. But again, look at the footwork. Get your hands on him. Took away the inside. I got hands on him. Now he's in phase. In phase. Receiver looks, I look. Receiver looks, I look. And just make a play on the ball now. Second play. This is versus a BYU. He's at the top. And this play right here is going to be a, a, a post corner. And he's going to kind of lose a little bit. Receiver goes outside. Mm, not bad. Made a mistake on the video. But back to it. The receiver goes outside, and he's going to stick his foot in the ground like it's a post, and it's going to kind of throw Gonzalez off a little bit. But then his length comes into the play. Being 6'2 helps him out a lot, a ton. You see the receiver releases outside for what reason I do not know. Stacks him, sticks that foot in the ground. Gonzalez goes for it, or either peaks in the backfield, and now he realizes I got to catch up. Does everything in his power to catch up. And just when the, the receiver goes up to high point it, he sticks those long arms up there and knocks it away. And kind of wrestles it out of there. Again, because he was beat on his route. And we'll see it from the end zone view when we get to it. But again, great job of closing, using his link to catch up, and then knocking the ball out. And you see it right there. He's beat. He's beat. The guy goes to high point it. He sticks that left arm up there, wrestles it away. Incomplete pass. Again, you can't coach being 6'2". You can't coach it, and especially a 6'2 corner, especially when all the receivers starting to be 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", 6'5". You got to find a gym and, at 6'2". Now, this play right here, which is the third play versus BYU, and then play, he's playing catch man. This is a perfect example of catch man. Perfect example. Going to start with his eyes on the QB, transition to his eyes on the receiver. Receiver breaks, he breaks Great position for a PBU. 
This is teach tape right here. It's how you teach your, your, your young DBs how to play it. Transition to the receiver. Sit on it. Sit on it. He breaks. You break. Then gets that gets the left arm in there to knock the ball away. To prevent the um or to prevent not getting a pass interference. And you'll see where he is right. And it's gonna be a little blurry, but you'll be able to get the gist of it. He's right all over, he's all over it. Sticking that left hand out there to knock it away. All over it. Yeah, I I started on the QB, make it look like zone. Ball was snapped, his eyes transitioned to his guy. And when his guy broke down and ran an in route, he basically ran it for him, for the most part. Now we get to the UGA tape. And again, remember I said he was the more physical person in every game with the exception of this one. Well, the ball's not coming this way. He's just going to get beat up in the end zone. That's all this is. He's about to get knocked if you bucked in the end zone. And George is going to run like a reverse or something, I think. And he, no, he did a good job of trying to take away the inside and just make him throw the fade. But once they realized it wasn't a pass, he just, them five just beat him up. There's no other way to say it. Watch him down here in the bottom of your screen, right there. Very bottom right corner. Right there, yeah. He be just getting beat up. That's it. That simple. Kung Pao. Still, just going at it. And again, remember. Every game but this one, he was the more physical in any receiver DB matchup that I saw. Like, he was the one beating people up. You go back and watch these games, you'll see a lot of him playing man and jamming people off the line and, and, and body slamming them out of bounds and hitting them. You'll, you just see him just be a bully. Well, the bully got bullied right here. But again, UGA probably bullied a lot of people. So I don't know whether to hold that against him or use it as a strike or or what. Because they bully a lot of people. But again, he's just getting WWE down there in the end zone. Now the second play. Ball's not coming, but he's running the fade route. And I think he did a great job technique wise of um covering this guy. Inside leverage, so you don't want him to go inside. And the receiver tries to give him a little stutter to get inside. But look at his technique. Look at his footwork. Great footwork. And again, what he didn't do was he didn't go straight back and open up that inside for the receiver. His back pedal kind of led him to the middle so he can keep his leverage. Or to the inside so he can keep his leverage. I think I'm going to draw it on the screen right here. This footwork is, is, is superb right here. And you footwork gurus that know it. He didn't drop straight back. He dropped at an angle to keep that leverage. And with that being said, he took away slants, uh, digs, any kind of in cutting route. He took that away. So now he got to run, go, uh, corner, uh, speed out, 10 yard out. That's all he got left. But watch the transition. Look at his hips, open his hips, and cross. They open his hips with that crossover step. Now he right in face. Drop step, crossover, drop step, crossover, in phase. Now you just turn and burn. At this point, turn and burn and try to push him toward the sideline. But I think five can, can run. I think five is a, is a burner. And Gonzalez don't really lose much out of him. Speed-wise, now the only throw he, he probably has is if he throw it up in that area where I'm got the little arrows going right now. If, if, if Bennett throws the ball up there, he probably got it because he's going to fade him out. But he took away all that in the middle with his technique. He took all that away and made him do something else with it. And again, the ball went somewhere else. It didn't go. To them, I just I just wanted to show his technique of covering that guy down the field. All right, it's the third play from UGA. Good job of taking away the inside, but this time they they targeting him. They targeting him. They throw a fade ball up there, and his technique not bad. Still took away the inside, open hips, crossover step, turn and run. Now just work it, push him toward the sideline. Just push him toward the sideline. Once you got him in this position right here, just work the sideline. Use the sideline as an extra defender. And he kind of does that. He closes the space. He's in phase. He's worked them closer to the sideline. But five just got better ball skills than him right there. That's all that is. His offense was better than his defense because he's in great position. But I like to use the, the Steph Curry analogy right here. 
you can play great defense on Steph Curry. I mean, great. Keep him out the paint. Keep him from doing a bunch of other things. But if he bags up to two feet behind that three-point line and shoot it, his offense is better than your defense. And in some cases of football, that's the, that's the case. Gonzalez is in great position off, uh, defensively. Five just makes a better play on the ball. It's, it's that simple. And you'll see it more here. Look at that. It's great position. He's covered. He's covered. He's looking back for the ball. When, when the receiver looks back, the receiver just did a better job of getting his hands on the ball before Gonzalez could, could do anything. And, again, sometimes the offense is better than your best defense. And I don't see it. only thing Gonzalez did wrong on this play, and I don't think it was necessarily wrong. He just didn't get a chance to stick that hand up there and knock it down. Maybe the ball got there quicker than he expected. Maybe he didn't judge it right. But, again, as far as where his body is, that's great position. That's great position. His body's in great position. He just didn't make a play on the ball. Five made a better judging of the ball, made a, a better athletic play. And that, you know, it's on Gonzalez. This is one of the four touchdowns he gave up all year. One of the six, 35 catches he gave up all year out of 64 targets. Um, had four picks. Had four picks. But for this play in particular, the guy just had better offense. So what I will say is for him to be 6'2", 201, his technique is pretty darn good. The the guys that, I'm going to say, don't matter, the lesser, the lesser skill guys, he dominates them versus UGA. They kind of made him look like a regular player, but Georgia does that to everybody because they load it. So, you know, without further ado, let's get on into Christian scores because um, he's the first cornerback. And um, I really need to lay out how I'm grading him because you're going to see a lot. If you go back and watch these games, you're going to see a lot of him just playing man, beating up on receivers with the exception of the Georgia game. And so it's kind of hard to grade him when people just didn't throw at him. Georgia threw at him, but other teams just didn't throw at him unless they kind of had to or, or you know, the concept took him there or whatnot. And you'll see him play mostly man, uh, some zone, and he's not bad in zone, but it's mostly man versus those other teams. And then versus Georgia, they kind of play 50-50, some man, some zone. But let's get into the scores. As far as the scores go, he's going to be – the first cornerback on my board because he's the first one I'm doing. And I'll tell you what the uh, categories are for a corner since this is the first one. Uh, IQ. IQ is really, you know, your smart, your football IQ, your, your smarts in the game, do some bonehead or, or peanut head play I take off. Uh, play speed. Do you look fast throughout the plays, whether you take a, take, um, a play off or you just loafing or what? That's your play speed. Ball skills. Can you go up and get the ball? Do you go up and knock it away? You go up and catch it? Uh, do it hit you in the face and drop in front of you? <laughs> That's ball skills. And then man coverage versus zone coverage. Those are the last two categories. And then, you know, I'll go ahead and tell you the scores. For IQ, he had a 75. Play speed, 73. Ball skills, 76. Man coverage, 72. Zone coverage, 78. Now, it was extremely hard to grade Christian because out, inside the Pac-10, I think they were petrified of him terrified just scared just scared of him and so um they didn't test him much so that's why his scores are so high and he's probably going to be one of the higher rated guys on the main sheet but that's because he's the first corner and they just didn't test him i may have to go back and readjust christian later on if i get some more games but right now he's standing at a 78.4 and that leads him to be the he has a 74.8 not 78.4. Sorry for the mix-up. Number one corner, mainly because he's the first corner. And a lot of other pundits have him as the best corner in the in the draft. But we'll see by the time make it here if that stands the, the uh, test of time. So, again, I appreciate you guys for coming through. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe also. Hit the bell so you can be notified when these videos drop. And you could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. See y'all next time. Peace.